Okay, so while I understand that this update that we're providing in this video may not be the most up-to-date, it may not have every individual piece of information that has been publicly set out there in the media, I wanted to focus in on more so one team and how this one team is getting involved in these trade rumors. We're talking about the Edmonton Oilers and we're talking yet again about Arizona Coyotes defenseman Jake Chitrin as well as an update given by Darren Dreger on TSN Insider Trading segment. By the way, I am so happy that Insider Trading, all these shows, 32 Thoughts, they're all back, baby. We have hockey again. There are rumors again. That gives us a lot more material to talk about, which makes me a very happy camper as a YouTuber. But pretty much, if you go back over to Jake Chitrin and you talk about what it is that makes him valuable, we had discussed this a ton over the past few years and I literally say years because it feels like it's been a few years now, but he's a big left-handed defenseman, he can score points, he's good at battling defensively and timing his reads, and he's good at scoring goals offensively. He's just a very good all-around defenseman whose numbers declined last season due to not being put on the top power play unit, plus the fact that his health has never really been the best over the past few years, but at the same time, with the contract that Jake Chitrin is on, it makes him a significantly more valuable player than had he been making the amount of money he's probably actually worth in the market. He's got a pretty good contract at $4.6 million a season till the end of 2025, and even though he has not really been the most healthy, he still has gone out there and been pretty good. The recent update we had from Darren Dreger came on an insider trading segment a few days ago. Of course, it's a video, so I'm not going to go out there and play the clip. Instead, we're going over on Spectre's Hockey from September 30th and going over the written analysis of what Dreger said. Darren Dreger reports interest in Jacob Chitrin by several clubs is growing as the regular season approaches. The 24-year-old defenseman recently confirmed he requested a trade from the Coyotes. Dreger said the Senators, Leafs, Oilers, Kings, Blues, and Blue Jackets are among the interested parties. However, there are salary cap hurdles for some of those clubs to overcome. The Coyotes have also reportedly lowered their asking price a bit, but they still want a first-round pick and a prospect involved in all of this trade talk. They still intend to be patient. And this is what I mean talking about what we said at the beginning of the video, yeah, there are a few pieces of information here. The Sens are interested, the Leafs are interested, the Kings, the Blues, the Blue Jackets, and the price has been lowered. There is a ton to talk about here, Lego. What the hell are you doing only talking about the Oilers? Well, the reason the Oilers conversation is one that intrigues me the most is because of a few follow-up tweets to the entire insider trading segment made by Mark Spector and Darren Dreger themselves. This is what Spectre tweeted out yesterday after the Oilers and Chitrin connection leaked out by Dreger. My understanding is the Oilers are not in on any Chitrin trade talks at the time. Philip Broberg is a non-starter as a prospect going to the Coyotes, as is Dylan Holloway. Pulley Yarvey, with the first round pick, is not enough for Arizona. Now, this tweet kind of got a lot of people saying, wait a minute, what the hell? Like, Darren Dreger just said yesterday that the Oilers are involved. Why are you saying that they're not involved the next day? And also, what the heck is this obsession that you've got with Pugliarvi always mentioning him everywhere a trade talk is being placed? This is kind of a funny pattern that you've seen with some members of the Edmonton media where it's like, okay, if the Oilers are involved in any sort of trade discussion, the name that always pops to the forefront is Jesse Pugliarvi. Because, of course, he is. Pugliarvi has been linked to every team in any kind of trade discussion because apparently it's very obvious that the Oilers want to ship him out. But either way, Spectre's going out there and saying that, hey, Pugliarvi in first is not enough for Chitrin, so the Oilers, hey, they're just not in the conversation anymore. And then you had Darren Dreger, who responded to Spectre earlier yesterday, too. For many teams, Edmonton included, meeting the asking price is a significant challenge. However, the Oilers have expressed interest and they stayed in communication with those involved. It doesn't mean they're actively trying to make a trade. As I reported, it's the same with the other clubs as well. And so, what Dreger is essentially saying here is that it's not only just Edmonton, but the Blues, the Blue Jackets, the Maple Leafs, the Kings, these other teams, they're just kind of in the mix. They're just talking about it. They're bringing it up once in a while. They're staying in communication because some of these teams, they need a little bit more extra time to free up salary cap space and then they can make the trade. Other teams are just kind of saying, okay, well, let's just keep the asking price up in the air and we'll see if we can fulfill anything that they want over the next few days if we see somebody that we like stand out at training camp or whatever. And so, if you go back to the original tweet here, I mean, yeah, the Oilers are not actively, like, calling Arizona and trying to make a trade work at the moment, but Chitrin might just be a guy who's in the back of their minds. 
However, when it comes to the asking price that has apparently been lowered to potentially just a first-round pick and a prospect, it does kind of intrigue me how Spectre's going out there and ruling out Broberg and or Holloway right away. Now, for Philip Broberg, let's go into the conversation with him. He's a guy that I honestly have liked a lot more now, or at least as of late, than I had back when he was drafted in 2019. Broberg is a player that I, if you go over the videos that we had made about him, definitely was not the highest on. He had all the tools, he was a skilled skater with really good stride, good puck carrying ability, but I was just really unconfident in his hockey IQ and the ability that he had to process the game. Now, he did improve that as the years went on, and he had a really good season in Bakersfield last season, 23 points in 31 games played, but his stint with the regular Oilers was not great. Three points in 23 games played, definitely a step down in terms of production. Now, I get it, he's only 21 years old, so it's not like he was given the best opportunity last year, but for Broberg, what you're really looking for is a guy that could become a puck-rushing, potential number one defenseman who could get upwards of 50-60 points in a season. For a guy like that to be considered untouchable when he's still so raw and unpolished, it's kind of funny to me, because if I think of what Jake Chitron is already... 21 points, 47 games played last year in a lower role. The season before that, he had 41 points in 56 games and 18 goals too. If you talk about what Jacob Chitrin is, bearing the injury troubles, Chitrin is what you kind of want Broberg to be, just a lot less skatey. Like, I get it, Chitrin and Broberg have different skill sets. Broberg is a lot more of a puck rusher, he is offensively minded, Chitrin is more of a two-way wall that can produce points and score goals. But if you get a defenseman that is as important as Chitron is right now to Arizona in Broberg, you'd probably consider that a win. So the idea that Broberg in this conversation is untouchable, it is kind of laughable to me because if you trade away Broberg in a first for Chitron, you're improving the Oilers by quite a lot. As for Dylan Holloway, you want to go over what he is. I mean, Holloway is just an absolute monster of a hockey player, too. Wisconsin Badgers alumni, he played really well with the Bakersfield system last year, as well as Broberg. He had 22 points in 33 games played, and he's only 21 years old as well. He actually just turned 21, so belated happy birthday to Dylan Holloway. But it's interesting to me how he's also considered an untouchable player when you factor in how Pulley was so easily tossed into this conversation as well. I get it, Holloway probably will be better than Pulley in the long term, but the Oilers don't really have any time to afford the long term. I feel like they kind of have to do things now. Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, Evander King, you're kind of in the prime of what this team has been for a long time, and you made the third round last year, so the only way to go is up, right? If you want to go out there and improve your team in the short term, I would rather have Pulley than Holloway. I love Dylan Holloway, and I think he'll be a really good top six scorer, maybe getting upwards of 60, 65 points on a season when he's in his prime, but... He's not there yet. He's been pretty good in the preseason, I feel, but still, there is a lot more development to go through before he is in that territory where it's like, okay, now you're an untouchable player. If we trade you away for Chitrin, that's a trade that we don't want to make because we think you're going to be better than that, Dylan Holloway. I don't know. Maybe it's just getting a little bit too high up on the prospects, but in terms of wanting to build the team immediately in the short term and getting a guy who is as good as he is as Chitrin... I feel like there's such a valuable contract here that makes it worth any sort of price that you'd be willing to give up on prospects. But of course, I understand that Oilers fans would get pissed off at me for making this video because it's like, yeah, you know, Broberg has a lot of potential down the line. You have Holloway, who has a lot of potential down the line, too. And if you give up on that for the next few seasons worth of Chitrin playing on your decor, you could understand why it's like, okay, well, if Holloway becomes like a Hall of Fame player and he's one of the best players in the league in 2030, then like, what the hell? The Oilers gave up on that for Chitrin? I get it, it's future versus now, but everybody's been talking about the now. Everybody's been talking about the Oilers wanting to go forward and you have this stacked top six and everybody's so good. Like, I don't know. I think it's kind of worth it if you traded away a Holloway and a first for a guy like Chitrin because the impact that a guy like Chitrin could have with the cap hit attached to him as well, like that could be so extraordinarily valuable. And if Chitrin is the difference between making the Stanley Cup Finals and making the third round... I think it would be a lot easier to stomach that sort of a trade if it's a Broberg or a Holloway involved the other way. I don't know. That's just my opinion. You can talk to the console your thoughts about Jake Chitrin and the entire trade conversation with him. Do you not think that a guy like Holloway or a guy like Broberg should be involved in these trade talks? Mark Spector says they're non-starters. But do you agree?
Let me know in the comments all your thoughts about this, the Darren Dreger quotes, as well as, I guess, any of the other teams that we talked about with an interest in Chitra. And if you're an Arizona Coyotes fan, what would you want from the Oilers in exchange for this defenseman? Is it Broberg? Holloway? Maybe another defenseman? Like... I don't know, Raphael Lavoie, Borgo. Talk in the comments, let your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. Rolls 99. And bye.